important to witness to your family. Yes. Nobody knows you like your family does. Yes. Is that right? Yes. And uh, what a wonderful testimony that you can share with brothers and sisters and cousins and parents and, and whoever else because they saw you win. You weren't in Christ. And they can witness the transformation that occurred in your life. Amen? And then when we talked with, uh, when we talked about Philip and Nathaniel, we emphasized that Nathaniel was a hard case. Nathaniel had certain prejudices within him. Nathaniel was ready to argue. But Philip demonstrated patience and he demonstrated a single-mindedness concerning the purpose of witnessing. He did not argue with Nathaniel. And you again you can read this in the first chapter of John. When Nathaniel brought up the fact that uh, according to him, nothing good could come from Nazareth. Philip didn't argue with him, he just told him to come and see, which is what our purpose is in witnessing to our friends and to our coworkers. Sometimes folk want to argue. They want to ask hard biblical questions. They want to test your knowledge of Genesis through Revelation. You don't have to be an expert on the Bible in order to witness to people. All you need is a testimony. And uh, Philip, instead of trying to deal with that prejudice that he had in him, he just told him, don't worry about all of that. You just come and meet the Messiah. And so, again, Philip give us, give, gives us an excellent example. Today, we're going to talk about witnessing the people that you're scared of. Witnessing the people that you are afraid of. Let's look at the, the ninth chapter of Acts. The ninth chapter of Acts. And... Uh, Let's start reading at verse number 10, verse number 10. And there was a certain disciple, you see that? All right, let's read it together, one, two, three, read. What did the Lord say to him? Gentleman was. 
in the ninth chapter, he's called Saul. But his more famous name is Paul the Apostle. Saul was his Jewish name. Paul was the name that he used because most of his ministry dealt with the Gentiles. So he used his Greek name, Paul. This gentleman was a murderer. Let's look at the eighth chapter. Well, let's look at the seventh chapter real quick. We try to, I want to show you something in the Word of God, and we try to do this as quickly as we can. Um, let's look at the seventh chapter, beginning at verse 52. Is that 52? 57. Verse 57. Read it. Now, they refers to the people on the Sanhedrin court and, and the, the other Jews that were in this particular setting, in this room, listening to a gentleman named Stephen testify about Jesus Christ. And when they heard Stephen say all that he said, then, the Bible says, they cried out with a loud voice. Read. They cried with a loud voice. Read. Uh huh. Ran upon him with one accord. Now they're rushing him because they've just lost their mind. They're so angry. They, 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 they have just lost it. All of them. It, it, it became a riotous mob. That, that begin to come after Stephen. Read. Cast him out of the city and stone him. Now that they get, they are killing this man. Okay, they are killing this man, throwing rocks and stones at him. This is what they did in the first century uh, when they executed someone. Uh, they would use various barbaric methods to do this. Okay, read. Whose name was Saul, which means, this means that Saul, this gentleman Saul, who we referred to in the ninth chapter, has some authority. The witnesses, the Bible says they laid down their clothes at his feet, and uh, this has significance in terms of them reporting to Saul because we're going to find out that Saul is responsible for Stephen's death. All right? Now, um, keep reading. And they stoned Stephen. Keep reading. Uh-huh. Uh-huh.
means he dragged them out of their houses and threw them in prison. This guy was a mess. He was literally responsible for hundreds of deaths of Christians. He tried to single-handedly destroy the church of Jesus Christ. Now, all of a sudden, he's on his way to Damascus. Read the ninth chapter. Ninth chapter, first verse. If he found any that were Christians, didn't matter if male or female, he was determined. He said, I've done a good job in Jerusalem. Now I want to go to Damascus. And I want to start, I want to shut down the church there. I want to arrest these Christians. These Christians are, are, are teaching this damnable doctrine about this Jesus Christ and trying to start them a separate religion, I'm not going to have it. In the first verse, says he breathed out threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. Saul was something else. But then something happened. Now, I don't have time to read the rest of this like I want to, but something happened. He's on his way to Damascus. The Bible says that there's a light that shines. That, that's brighter than the noonday sun, not Saul off his beat. He looks up into heaven and says, Who art thou, Lord? And, and, and Jesus responds and says, I'm Jesus whom thou persecuted. It's hard to kick against the prison. Yes. And, 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 and then Saul said, Well, what must I do? Now he's he gets converted now. You know, what must I do? Now, this is the important thing. This is the important thing. This is one of the important things I want to share with you one of the days. He asked the question. What matter of fact, what verse? Verse number six. Read verse number six. What do you want me to do? Now, he's had this experience with Jesus Christ. He's heard this voice from heaven. Jesus identifies himself. Now, Paul is saying, what must I do? Now, notice. Notice something. Notice that Jesus could have told him, Paul, all you need to do is repent, ask me for forgiveness, call on my name, and you will be saved. Couldn't he have done that? It's not like Jesus doesn't know his own path to salvation. He could have said that. But what does he tell him? Arise, go into the city, instead of Jesus telling him, which he could have, he says, go into the city, and somebody else is going to tell you. I wish I had, I, I wish I had more amen. In other words, saints of God, brothers and sisters, you know how we ask God to save people? We ask God, Lord, to bring people off the street. We ask God, Lord, touch that prostitute and, and bring her in, Lord. Lord, touch that robber and save him, Lord. And you know what God is saying? He says, I would do that, except I need to use you to get it done. In other words, God uses people to save people. God uses people to save people. In other words, you are the one that God is going to use to save the people in your world, on your job, in your home, in your neighborhood. Why do you think you're there? Why do you think that God placed you where you are? Why do you think 
you are at the location where you have been placed. Oh, you think it's because this was a beautiful house and uh, you searched it, you searched the area out and you saw that it was a nice school and you saw that it was a nice quiet area and so you, you just, yeah, we, yeah, me and my husband, we picked it, me and my wife, we like this house. But little do you know that God had a plan to place you, he's the one that told you to go and look the place up. You thought it was you getting on the internet. You thought you were so smart. Then you get on the internet and Google some areas. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Let, let me do some research. You think you're so smart. And God is the one who did all of that and put it in your heart so that you can live where you're living, so that you can work where you're working. Because God has some souls that need to be saved. And he wants to use Everybody say he wants to use me. He wants to. He wants to. Haven't, haven't you heard God's voice yet? Haven't you? Haven't God put something in your spirit yet to, to where you begin to see the need? The need for a light, the need for your witness, the need for your testimony. So let, let, let me get to the heart of my message. So, of course. Um, Saul gets up and, and, and goes into goes into Damascus. And the Bible says he went on a fast. Notice uh, verse 9. And he was three days without sight and neither ate nor drank. Y'all see that? Some of us, we came fast at 4 o'clock. Think we're dying. We just, I'm, I'm, about, I'm about to pass it. You don't understand. <laughs> three days and three nights. He needs a what? Eight. You know, some folks think if they don't have water, they going to pass off the sea. You shall never see me again. He neither ate nor drank. No, that's not my message. All right. And so God speaks to a certain disciple named Ananias. He spoke to him in a vision. And God tells Ananias, go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. Now, now, again, this, this, this is the meat of my message. God speaks, what, what's this? God speaks to Ananias and tells Ananias what to do. Now, th this ain't the P Ananias pastor or a prophet. This is God speaking to Ananias directly. As a matter of fact, Ananias knows it's God because he says, here I am, Lord. So God speaks to him and what does Ananias say? Lord, as if God doesn't know. Lord, I have heard from me about this man. In other words, God, are you sure you want me to go and witness to him? Lord, don't you? Don't you know what he don't you know what an awful, evil, wicked man this is? H have you ever, have you ever came across, maybe you never, never met, but you came across, maybe you've seen from afar off, people that were so wicked and so mean and did some god-awful stuff? <laughs> have you ever came across somebody that you said, hmm, they going to buzz hell wide open. Now, now come on. I, I wish you'd be honest. Be, be honest. Come on. We have already sentenced them to eternal life in hellfire. I mean, we don't know if they're guilty or not, but we don't need to see the evidence. We, they going to buzz hell. 
Now, 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 they're not just going to hell. They're going to bust hell. They're going to go so fast. Y'all not saying nothing to me. But don't you know that that's the type of person that God wants to save? He wants to save the ones whom you think are unsavable. He wants to, God, what if God, that, that person that you're just thinking about, that person that, you're, that, that, that just came to mind, somebody that you met five years ago, ten years ago, that person, that, what if God saved that person? Wouldn't you say, oh my God. Wouldn't you say, God, you must be a miracle worker. Have you ever ran across somebody like that and, and you met them like 10 years later and they are a deacon in the church and you walked up to them and said, oh my God. The Lord saved you. I wish I had more amen than him. That's the God specializes in the hard cases. And God saves people. He wants to save people. He delights in saving people whom you think he can't save. Now, we all know that God can do anything. But sometimes we meet up on some folk whom we say, God, even you going to have some trouble with this one. But God can save. I wish I had somebody help me. God can begin 
to mistreat us. I wish I had more amen. We're so concerned about our reputation. We're so concerned about how we appear to people that we, we literally are afraid to open up our mind. I heard some people on yesterday, we were all uh, talking about what we want God to do in our consecration. And, uh, and I heard a number of people say that they want God to give them courage. Courage to witness. Courage to, 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 to testify to people who don't know Jesus Christ. And, and that is a, a wonderful prayer to pray. But let's think about this. What are we afraid of? What are you? Are they going to kill you like Ananias was thinking? No. Are they going to put their hands on you? No. Will they probably think that you're crazy? Yes. But so what? There's a whole lot of crazy folk out here. And they don't mind you knowing that they're crazy. I was saying on, on Friday night, my wife and I, we were driving down to Chicago between Schaefer and Myers. And we were just seeing crazy folk left and right. I mean, talking to themselves, looking all crazy, just like they belong in the psych ward. But they walk in the streets. I mean, looking like Osama bin Laden. I mean, just crazy. And they don't mind you thinking that they're crazy. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Got a, a, a young man stopping traffic with his hands like this. He begging for money. He got traffic stopped. Please give me some money. He don't mind nobody. Y'all ain't saying to me. He don't mind nobody thinking he's crazy. Ain't that crazy to stop traffic in order to get a dollar? You liable to get hit, man. Get out the street. If he don't mind folk thinking he's crazy, what about us? Now, we know we're not crazy. But all God wants you to do is open up your mouth and let folk know you're saved. I mean, instead of praying, praying one of them quick prayers over your food, you know how you do. Because you don't want nobody to see you blessing your food. And so you drop your napkin. I wish somebody say amen to me. Y'all don't like that kind of teaching. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real quick. Lord bless us. Man, man, bow your head and stay there for a while. God, I thank you. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. We were in the hospital. I got to go. We were in the hospital um, on Wednesday. I was in the hospital visiting Bishop Bella. And Bishop Bella. Bishop Dullin, his, his, uh, his intercessory prayer team came to the room and, you know, we were about to have prayer. Now, when I pray for people in the hospital, you know, I'm cognizant of, you know, the person, you know, that's on the other side of the curtain, you know, that nurses and doctors, you know, need to come in and out, you know. So, uh, you know, I'm going to pray in a certain tone, you know, because, you know, we're in the hospital. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> oh, my God. Them proud warriors came in there. My soul loves Jesus. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, we get ready to go to church. <laughs> In other words, they did not mind anybody thinking that they were crazy. <laughs> and, and, and I can understand that when your pastor is sick, you don't care. My soul. Thank you. 